Okay, for this tutorial, we want to start off with whatever image you're going to use. And if it's opened up as a background, um, you're going to want to duplicate this. So you can right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. Or you can hold down the option key and double click and turn it into a regular layer. Then hold down the option key and click and drag and make a duplicate. Uh, then you're going to want to go back and make the original background again. Uh, for simplicity, uh, I'm going to just add a solid color right now for the background. Then I'm going to add a new layer and rough in my image frame like this. Um, if these are not black and white, tap the D key, then the X key to bring white to the front, hold down the Option key, and click Delete. Create a new layer. Deselect using the Marquee tool. Click and drag inside to make the Polaroid image frame like this. Hold down the command key, type delete, and let's center this up a little better. I like that. Okay. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, Polaroid images were inset a little bit, so I'm going to hold down the command key and click on the layer to select that layer. And then I'm going to click on the original white layer and delete so that I have a hole in it. Deselect, double click on the layer, bring up the layer styles. We want to drop shadow. Um, I like my light off to the right, upper right. Bring this down to about one. And the distance of one. Like that. Uh, that'll be good enough. Um, I'm going to want to hold down the shift key, select both of these layers, layers one and two and group them. I'm going to spin down the group. I'm going to double click on the black layer to bring up the layer styles and in the blending options section. For the knockout, I'm going to set it to deep. And then I'm going to set the fill opacity down to zero. Uh, since Polaroids are notoriously bad at um, accurate color, I want to do a couple of things here to um, change the color a little bit. I want to start with a satin. I'm going to change this to either linear burn or linear dodge. Set the opacity up to 100%. Click on the color. Since we're burning this, we want just a little bit up here. Now, uh, good color variations to use are either in the blue ranges, uh, where you get a blue cast, or you get kind of a yellow-orange cast either one because we're going to counter this with a uh, color overlay in a minute. Adjust this up a little bit to taste. You'll be coming back to this to adjust this a little bit. Set the angle to about 45. Um, you can move the distance up but 
set the size so that it bleeds into the corners a little bit so that you get kind of this edge effect uh, that fades off a little bit and we'll head over to color overlay and wait which one do I do linear burn we want to do linear dodge on this one and whatever color you use for the other one you're going to want to use something contrasting let's go to the blue and bring it down in here a little bit and you don't want to add much and so you'll be at the bottom of the range here something like that okay now that we've set up the basics um, now all you have to do is duplicate these groups uh, do another one hold down the option key click and drag and then uh, type V for the move tool move the second one out um, you don't want to auto select this one over a little bit come down here with this one um, let's just make some more copies like that and then you can go back Click on the group you want to transform, Command T, rotate it around. Enter. Next group, Command T, rotate it. Move it into position. Then I'd like to have this one in front, so I'll click on that and move it up to the top. You can change the stacking order of any of these by moving them into position here. And that's pretty much what we want. Uh, you can fiddle around, now that these are all set up, you can play around with the color balance in each one of these. If you vary them up a little bit, it'd be more of a genuine effect. like that you get the idea just bury them up a little bit
Okay, to finish this off, we can move our copy layer. Or actually, we can turn off the color fill. To finish this off, we can just select the copy of the background. Add a little bit of a blur. Uh, about four pixels and then a radial blur. Mm. Make this a zoom. There we go. Something like that. Pretty simple stuff. <laughs> 